All right, welcome back to Off the Bench, presented by UDF. We thank all of you checking us out uh, on YouTube. Go to YouTube Chatterbox. Charlie says, uh, go Bengals. Chris has Who Day. Phil loves Tracy Jones. And uh, a bunch of you, thank you so much for uh, watching. All the thumbs up. We ask you to subscribe. And you can always check us out on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, at Tom Brenneman TV. I was mentioning a minute ago, uh, I, I'm really looking forward to um, – to our next guest, uh, I, I had a chance to meet him years ago. He wouldn't remember when I was doing the NFL on Fox all those years. We would rarely get teams in the um, AFC, but he had come to the NFC uh, with the Chicago Bears near the end of his career, Reuben Brown. And uh, he has made his home at Buffalo and a and, uh, great player, nine-time Pro Bowler, college football Hall of Famer uh, as an offensive guard. And I'm sure one day we'll be in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. So a pleasure to be joined by Reuben Brown. How are you, young man? I'm awesome. I'm awesome. Thanks for having me. And, uh, yeah, you, you, you did the NFC, right? Primarily, you know, with Fox. We would get some games where an NFC team would go play you in Buffalo, um, I was doing all that before you were born, though, Ruben. So uh, you weren't even uh, at Pitt yet, I don't think. So, you know, the, the one thing I want to talk to you about, though, real quick, if you don't mind, we had Anthony Munoz on, on the show yesterday for about 45 minutes. And he, one of our favorite people and, and truly one of the great human beings that's uh, ever lived here in greater Cincinnati. But wh when I've read about stuff you've done through the years, you know, you're that same guy in Buffalo. I mean, you won the Walter Payton Man of the Year Award three times. Uh, your charity work, especially with kids, uh, has just been unbelievable. Um, Anthony had made the comment yesterday that when he was playing, he didn't want to start the foundation because, you know, there's only so much time in a human being's life, right? You got your family, you got your faith, you got your football, and, and you can't give it your all. Did you look at it that way and then kind of start doing a lot of your stuff after you got off the playing field? Absolutely. Uh, it's very difficult to uh, run a, a foundation. Will Shields told me the same thing when I was uh, approaching the point where I was, you know, doing enough activity that we felt that uh, a foundation would be uh, the best option for me to operate in. But definitely, it, ta it takes a lot of effort, a lot of your energy. And uh, I, like Anthony, uh, during my playing days, I didn't want to, you know, do it, but it came about. And it it's like a calling, so to speak. And so uh, I've kept it up after my playing days, and it's taken me everywhere. What's the soft spot in your heart? Of all the stuff you do, what's the one thing when you go or you do, you say to yourself, man, this is definitely the calling? <laughs> Well, I really like offering young children, young the youth, an opportunity. You know, anything I do when I raise funds, I go look for local programs that are devoted to supporting and advancing the development of youth in their community. And that's and it takes a lot of forms. Um, we've helped the Salvation Army. We've helped uh, after school programs, sports programs, you name it. I, I could go on and on. But to see uh, the relief on the workers, the volunteers, the people that sacrifice their face when someone like myself, an athlete, or, or someone that wants to be philanthropic steps in and, and offers them, it's a great look that these people that are sacrificing this time give you. And then... You know, the look on the kids for mm -hmm. whatever you're supporting, whatever program they're involved in, because, you know, uh, it's like a pay it back, pay it forward type thing. As a young kid, people did those things for me. I was in programs and sports programs and things that people had the fun. So uh, I use my energy to try to support those. Well, that's, great. that's great stuff. You also spent a lot of time and energy following your Buffalo Bills. Um, yeah. I, I, I I got to be honest, and you might tell me, Tom, you're an idiot. You have no idea what you're talking about. I am really surprised how many people, uh, almost every single person out there that's a quote-unquote expert or serious follower of football, that believes Buffalo is the overwhelming favorite to win the AFC. 
Do you believe that? Do you feel that way? No. Uh, I'm a prove it type of guy. I played the game long enough. I've been in these situations where your team has either been predicted to be horrible or great. Uh, it means nothing. Uh, the only thing that matters is how they play each week, um, uh, Thursday, Sunday, whenever they play, uh, tonight's the night. And, uh, and that's what matters. You know, the product that they put out on the field each week is what makes me a believer. I'm a, I'm a fan of the Buffalo Bills, but I'm a critical sports uh, watcher, you know, I, I'm critical of, of watching what the guys are doing and how they are executing. I'm rooting for them, but I'm not going to just say, "Hey, the Bills are winning," because I, I played for the Buffalo Bills. I know what what they have to do in order to win. They have all the tools, um, but they ha they have a long journey in front of them, and, and we're all hoping and, and praying and wishing that they. Uh, reach the final stage and win the Super Bowl, but I'm not just giving it to them. Um, when you look at their team, and let's start, and certainly, you know, you, when you're an offensive lineman, those are generally, I've found through the years, I, I think collectively they're the smartest guys on the field, uh, on both sides of the ball. And they, they have a really good idea about what they have, e even the guys that they're not standing next to on that line, they, they know what their receivers are all about, their makeup mentally, uh, the quarterback, the whole night. Start with the offensive line. Do you like that group? Uh, it's the biggest question mark on the team. They have the most to prove. Uh, they, I would say, aren't the most cohesive unit or uh, a unit that knows each other that well in that many years. Uh, there's a um, Spencer Brown, young, exciting player that's new to the lineup. He, he got some playing time last year. And then Dawkins, the mainstay. But uh, for a lot of those guys, it's their prove it year. Um, they've got eight years in the league or more or six years. These This year, starting to look for some something to jail. And the offensive uh, coaching staff's going to really have to work to call plays to bring them together. Um, I'm afraid that the offensive system will be so enamored with their skill positions that they forget to support and bring along this offensive line that will need their help play calling and you know things like that. But I, I think they have the talent that can do it for them, but they're going to have the toughest challenge this season. Well, the toughest challenge for any offensive lineman is when you're lining up against a guy like Aaron Donald which they're going to go tonight. I, I don't know. Who, who would be the equivalent? And I'm not saying it's somebody as good as Aaron Donald. Hell, you might think they're better than Aaron Donald. Who was a guy that you knew when you played against that was kind of in that mold where you're like, man, you know, here we go. I, I, I mean, I, I bring it every week, but I better really bring it this week. Was there somebody back in your playing days that stood out like that? How appropriate is this day? Is today 9-6? Yes, I think it is 9-6. And 9-6 is Cortez Kennedy. Cortez Kennedy is one of the greatest defensive tackles that ever played the game. And I would equate that to having to face Aaron Donald. I'm sure those guys are having the same type of anxiety I had when facing <laughs> Cortez <laughs> so You are. You, you have to be on point and all of your movements and everything has to be decisive. You really have to be super focused. I mean, I'm not to say that you're not each week, but when you're facing a one-in-a-lifetime performer, I mean, I was on the field when Reggie White was out there. I was on the field when um, Derek Thomas was out there. I played against Junior Seau. You know, these are the names and type of people that – you know, you, you have one gear to, to, to be a great player, but you want to be on the level with the Muhammad Ali's, you got to, you know, be able to step it up and, and, and be competitive against Aaron Donald. Um, and, and the great thing about the offensive line in the, in the, in the um, offense is the offensive line can do it together. They don't have to be alone. Um, I got a lot of help over the years when I faced someone like Cortez Kennedy. I had Kent Hall, great center mm -hmm. next to me, that uh, gave me a hand. And, you know, if even if I wasn't physically blocking him, he would give me tips on 
you know, my positioning and where I might have help. And the same thing I had with o Olin Crutes out in uh, Chicago. Yep. Um, we would play those big uh, Sean Rogers and, <laughs> and guys like that. So uh, you do it as a unit. You can't think that you're going to stop Aaron Donald with one-on-one -on -one matchup. Now, maybe if you had Ruben Brown at you playing guard again. <laughs> that way. That way. <laughs> you, Love it. Love it. You may have a chance. <laughs> you know? Love it. But Love it. The rest of the guys, they, they're they going to need help, and the offense needs to know that. And um, we used to have an affectionate uh, term, Kent Hall used to say, is they find the werewolf. <laughs> Which one of these guys is the werewolf? And, you know, um, Aaron Donald is the werewolf. Yeah. You know, and he's the guy that has to have all the attention on doubling him, making it difficult for him to penetrate the offensive line. And uh, it's not an impossible job, but they have to be focused. Uh, Josh Allen, uh, you, you made the comment uh, a few minutes ago, Ruben, that, uh, you know, you're a show me guy. And look, everybody can go back and watch that game when they got beat in the conference semis, that wild game. Uh, where, you know, who, who had the ball last, uh, right, is who wins mm -hmm. the game. Kansas City wins the game. Allen had a great game. But I, I, I'm i curious, you know, you, you played with some great quarterbacks. You played with some mediocre quarterbacks. Uh, the potential with this guy is unquestioned. I mean, you know, he can mm -hmm. run, he can throw, he can do it big and strong and fast and tough and, and all this kind of stuff. What does he still have left to prove, if anything, to you? Uh, really take control of the offense and run it, uh, and run it in a positive way, meaning uh, when the cards are stacked against them, get the best, safe, most productive play out of the situation. Um, keep them upbeat, on pace, in tempo, um, and it can't all be about Josh Allen. Yes, he has the big contrast. Yes, he's a quarterback, but it is a team sport. And if he can rally the troops, to, um, you know, stand up and be accountable and do their jobs, I think that's the really big step that will push him into the Super Bowl. Um, just being in control. Uh, like a, I, the examples I'd like to give, give like a Peyton Manning sort of, you know, a, a general. And really, I know it from Jim Kelly and Kent Hall. Sure. I mean, they were masterful at switching up the offense into the most productive play. They, the defense might notice what we're doing and shift it into something. Or we, we're playing a, uh, a formation just to trick them into getting into something that we're going to be able. So having that ability and the nuance of running the offense for him and his teammates is really where the next level is for him. He, he can't rely on the coaching staff to do it all. He knows those guys. He knows the plays. He knows where it needs to go. He's seeing the, the uh, defense, you know, um, you know, the offensive line and the rest of the guys can give give them pointers and input, but really he sees the defense best out of all the guys, him in the center, out of all the guys on the field. And they got to, you know, get that offense rolling. Um, Sean McDermott has always been an outstanding defensive coach, um, and, and, and that's where, you know, he made his hay as a coordinator for many, many years. Uh, he's brought a toughness back, I think, you correct me if I'm wrong. There's always been a toughness about Buffalo. It's a tough place to play. The weather conditions, you got to be tough and, 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 and all those things that go along with a great town. I love that town. Um, yeah. But, but um, as good as that defense was last year, they get lit up by Kansas City, as I mentioned a minute ago, in the playoffs when it matters. Uh, they go out and bring in Von Miller. Boy, what a what an acquisition that is for the Bills going into this season. Yes, that's huge. That's a huge uh, addition to their defense that was spunky. I will call them a spunky defense. You know, they had some breakdowns here and there, but they were a feisty defense all year. And really, uh, up front has been a big problem for the defense, the defensive line rotation, the pressure up front. 
Um, and with adding Von Miller, you have a player now just from the defensive line um, position that can affect the, the passing game as far as pressuring the quarterback sacks and that nature and also making it difficult for um, different types of matchups, whether it be blocking schemes or passing protections, all of those. So he's going to hugely help the DBs who yep. uh, arguably some of the best DVs around. You know, we have a, our outstanding de defensive back core when healthy. You know, I know um, uh, we, we one of our guys is not doing well right now, but when healthy, we have a very formidable defensive backfield. And our linebackers are, you know, above average standout linebackers. They, they can definitely improve, but uh, all indications are that we are improving in those positions just by adding – you know, some effectiveness up front with Von Miller. Mm -hmm. uh, well, what's the general feel? What's your gut feel tell you about tonight? Well, I feel like the Bills, I want the Bills to win, you know, and this would be a great test for the Bills. Um, this won't mean if the Bills win or lose, um, it won't mean they're definitely going to the Super Bowl. It's the first game of the season, and a lot's going to change throughout the course of the injuries and, you know, different things like that. The, the, the Rams may not be the same team they are opening the season that they are will be at the end of the season. Same for the Buffalo Bills. Um, but uh, the Bills need to get off, really start off finding out about their offense, number one, this is what I'm looking for from them, and this is what I think will make them a consistent winning team opposed to just winning tonight, which we hope they, they do. The Bills need to find out how are we going to effectively run the, run the ball as a supplement to all of this passing that we have designed mm -hmm. that we're going to – go after we're going to get josh back there we're going to pass it out to our great receivers we got just signed our tight end when he's going to be active we got to get it out to the backs in the backfield but in what way other than josh running the ball are we going to effectively find running plays that really keep us in those low percentage achievable downs that are going to make the the team and the offense deadly uh, opposed to having a struggling running attack and relying heavily on the passing game and relying solely on Josh's legs when, you know, he should be matured out of that now. Yes, scramble if all else fails, but, you know, let's call a, a scheme that doesn't put you in such uh, danger and let the running guys that really run the ball run it and, and get those yards that we need. So that's the way I see it. And obviously, I'm an offensive line. I'm going to talk run the ball more than passing. Yeah, yeah. Oh. <laughs> you know? Yeah, the offensive linemen, they like lining up and going to hit somebody and send them coming to hit you as you're backpedaling all the time, right? I mean, you know. Yeah, you that's make... the best way to take it to, to um, Sam Donald. I mean, it, it's tough and is in, in his, um, uh, a defensive threat as he is. You know, a lot of double teams come fourth quarter, you know, it'll wear them down enough you know, where you can uh, keep him not so effective. But you have to be able to find some effective ways to sneak in that run and, and wear him down. You know, boxing, body blows. You need the body blows to, yeah. you know, take the head shot. Well, Ruben, we can't thank you enough for your generosity with your time, man. It's a real pleasure having you on here tonight. We'll be tuned into the Buffalo Bills, and, uh, and, and now that we've had you on the show, we'll be thinking of you while we're watching tonight. All the best to you. Godspeed ahead, my friend. Tom, it's a joy and a pleasure to be on with you. And, I, you know, there's when a, someone has a gift, they always look at other people with their gift and say, oh, it would be nice to have that gift. You have one of the greatest voices. Oh, on on radio, TV, everything, man. I wish I had that voice. You do. You, know? you got the good looks. <laughs> you got the good well, looks and played you. in the NFL. Man. You're going to the Hall of Fame one day, man. I'm sitting around in Hamilton, Ohio. Come on. What are you talking about? Well, you know, 
Well, God bless you, man. Same to we, you, buddy. We love you. I love you, and uh, let's do it again sometime. I would love to do it again. Well, how about when the Bengals play the Bills in the AFC Championship game this oh. year? Oh, there you go. There you go. That's how going. It's going to happen. Okay, I'll All right. hold you to it. It's, Absolutely. It's and, and if they play it here, I'm in your place. I'm coming up and and, and hanging out with you for night and taking you to dinner. And if the game's down here, I'm taking you to dinner here. All right. Word. Okay. All right. For Good sure. deal. Thanks, Thanks, Ruben. Appreciate it, Thanks, man. man. Good dude, Ruben Brown. Great player. Good lord. Great player, man. Thirteen years in the NFL. Nine-time Pro Bowler. Um. He knows his stuff about them. I, you know, I, I love the guys, the first line out of his mouth. I am a show-me kind of guy. Not all the pub and all this and the buildup and the hype and everything else. You got to show me. And you can tell by talking to him, he laid it out there. He's rooting for the Buffalo Bills to win. That's his team. That's where he lives. That's where he's raised his family. All those great things. Had a great career there. But he, he is saying, look, they, they got some things on the line. Guys, got, they got to prove themselves. The quarterback's got to be better. They got to run the ball. And uh, it'll be fun to watch tonight. I can't wait. I know all of you are really excited about the start of the National Football League.